All right, what we're going to do is take all of these conversions that we've been working with and put it all together. And this will allow us to convert between liters, moles, grams, molecules, and atoms. So what this podcast is going to consist of is simply doing some practice problems and getting used to the procedures. You want to have a periodic table, a calculator, and something to write with as you're doing these problems. The other thing you want to do is get your practice packet if you haven't, or, or if you haven't printed it, print your practice packet because the problems that I'm going to do are right from the packet. Now if for some reason you don't have the packet it's no big deal but just so you know that's where these problems are coming from. Alright let's take a look at this mole map and even though it looks incredibly confusing right now it actually makes this whole process a lot simpler. So when we're done, there will be a link to this slide on the website. You might want to print this out so you have it handy. So anyway, what this tells us is that if we're going from moles to grams or moles to volume or whatever conversion, it tells us what the conversions are. So in other words, let's say we're going from moles to grams. So in other words, let's say we had 0.5 moles of something and we wanted to convert that to grams. Well, it tells us here that we would put one mole in the denominator and then grams in the numerator and it says grams are always obtained from the periodic table. So if this were moles of say hydrogen, one mole of hydrogen, periodic table, one hydrogen is one gram, so two of them would be two grams of hydrogen per mole. If we were going from grams to moles, then grams would be in the denominator, one mole in the numerator. Moles to volume, your conversion is one mole, 22.4 liters, and the reverse, you're just taking a reciprocal of that conversion. Moles to molecules, we use Avogadro's number, and moles to atoms, we would use Avogadro's number. Now, if we're looking for atoms within a molecule, then we would use the number of atoms in that molecule per one molecule, and we'll do at least one problem like that. So you can refer back to this mole map as you're doing these problems. In fact, it wouldn't be a bad idea to print out the mole map while you're doing your practice problems in the packet. Let's get started then, and as you can see, the number and the page from your practice packet are listed so you can follow along or simply do the problems in your packet and then come back and check them. All right, so number one says, what's the mass of 7.5 moles of sulfur dioxide? So we're going to start with the given 7.5 moles sulfur dioxide. And now what we want to do is convert to mass, which has units of grams. So our first conversion, we want to get rid of moles, and we want to convert to grams. So if you look at your mole map, one mole of sulfur dioxide, the grams are from the periodic table, so we're going to take 32 plus 2 times 16, which is going to give us 64 grams of sulfur dioxide. That way the moles cancel, we have grams of sulfur dioxide, and that's what we're looking for. So let's take 7.5 times 64, and we get 480 grams of sulfur dioxide. Number two says how many moles are there in 21.4 grams of nitrogen? So again, start with the given, 21.4 grams of nitrogen. Set up your first conversion. We're going to put grams in the denominator. And according to the mole map, the only thing we can go from grams to is moles. So one mole. Nitrogen has a molar mass of 14. And since there's two of them, we have 28 grams. Our grams cancel. The unit in the numerator is moles. That's what we're looking for. So we can simply do the math. And we get 0.76 moles 
of nitrogen. Okay, we're still on page three and four. Let's take a look at number 10 and number five. Doesn't matter which order we go in. So let's start with number 10. We've got 0.38 moles of any gas, and we wanna know what the volume is. So let's start with the given, 0.38 moles. And you might be thinking, well, don't we have to know what the gas is? And the answer is no, because our conversion, if you remember, one mole of any gas at STP is 22.4 liters. Our moles cancel. 0.38 times 22.4 is 8.5, and the unit there is liters of that gas. So as you can see, all we're doing with this dimensional analysis is canceling units until we get the unit that we're looking for in the problem. And this technique is going to go a long way towards your success in this class throughout the rest of the course. All right, now we're looking for how many atoms there are in 1.5 moles of neon. So start with the given. 1.5 moles of neon. When you start your conversions, don't even really worry too much about the whole process. Just go step by step. We're going to put moles of neon in the denominator. And if you went back and looked at your mole map, you'll see that you can go from moles of neon to atoms of neon. One mole, Avogadro's number. That way our moles cancel. 1.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd gives us 9.03 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of neon. Now you wanna be careful with atoms and molecules. Since neon is an atom, we can go directly from moles to atoms. But if you were talking about a molecule, then you would have to make sure that you're using the right unit. Okay, calculate the, this is number 13 from page three and four. It says calculate the number of moles there are in 5.45 times 10 to the 25th atoms of zinc. Now this one is kind of like the last one. So our first conversion, we're gonna put atoms in the denominator of zinc, and we can go from atoms of zinc to moles of zinc, one mole contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Cancel out your atoms, do the math, 5.45 times 10 to the 25th divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd gives us 90.5 moles of zinc. Sorry, that says 90.5. Okay, let's take a look at number one from page five. It says, what's the mass? And remember, mass has, has units of grams. If you start with 51 liters of oxygen gas. Now we're gonna talk about what we refer to as diatomics. And again, we'll talk about that a little bit later, but for right now, when you see oxygen gas, we're gonna write that as O2 not just the atom oxygen. And again, we'll talk about why a little bit later. Okay, so let's do the first conversion. We're starting with liters, so we need liters in the denominator. From our molar volume, we know there's 22.4 liters per mole. Liters cancel. Now we need grams, so we have to keep doing conversions. Mole of O2. According to our mole map, we can go from moles to grams. One mole, two times 16 is 32 grams. Our moles cancel. Do the math, divided by 22.4 times 32, and we get 72.9 grams of O2. All right, let's take a look at one with molecules. What's the volume, so I'm looking for liters, occupied by 
that many molecules of CO2. Okay, so let's start with 9.45 times 10 to the 24th molecules of CO2. And notice I write out everything. Um, that comes in handy because as these problems get more difficult and more complicated, if you write out everything, it keeps everything organized. And that is a 24, not a 29. Okay, so let's do our first conversion. I'm going to put molecules in the denominator. Now I can go from molecules to moles, and again we're talking about CO2. One mole of CO2 contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. So we cancel out our molecules, and now we go from moles to liters. One mole, 22.4 liters of CO2. Do the math, 9.45 times 10 to the 24th divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 22.4, and we get 351 liters. All right, let's do a couple more. How many calcium atoms are there in 100 grams of calcium metal? Now notice when I'm doing these problems, I always underline what it is I'm trying to find and what it is I start with. What that does is it gets the important information out of the problem for me so I don't get tripped up with the wording of the problem. A common complaint from students is that the wording of the problem is different on the exam than in the worksheets and you need to figure out techniques to figure out what the problem is asking for. So you will always see me indicate which I'm, what unit I'm looking for and what we're starting with. So 100 grams of calcium, or calcium. Now, now, calcium is just an atom, so we're going to write it as calcium. So let's do the first conversion. Grams of calcium per mole. Look on your periodic table, and you will see that calcium has a molar mass of 40. So our grams cancel. Now we have moles of calcium. We need atoms. So let's do another conversion. Let's put moles in the denominator atoms in the numerator. One mole of calcium is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of calcium. Moles cancel. Let's do the math. 100 divided by 40 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd gives us 1.5 times 10 to the 24th atoms. And again, that's 24 got to work on my fours. All right, now let's do one with molecules. We're going to calculate the number of grams from 9.7 times 10 to the 22nd molecules. Okay, so let's start with the given. 9.7 times 10 to the 22nd molecules of our compound and I'm just I'm not going to write out the formula for that. It's going to take up too much space. So let's do our first conversion. Molecules to moles. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules per mole. And if you're ever unsure about where these numbers are coming from, again, make sure you're just looking at your mole map. Molecules cancel. Now we have moles to go to grams. We're going to say one mole of CH3, CH2OH, let's calculate the molar mass, 12 plus 3 plus 12 plus 2 plus 16 plus 1 gives us a molar mass of 46 grams of the compound. Moles cancel. Do the math, 9.7 times 10 to the 22nd divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 46 gives us 7.4 grams. Okay, let's do one last problem and this is going to be what I consider the trickiest problem of them all because what you're looking for is atoms within a molecule. 
So let's start with the given. 4.56 grams of carbon dioxide. Now don't even worry about the rest of the problem. Let's just do one conversion at a time. We're going to do grams of carbon dioxide per mole. And we know there's 44 grams of carbon dioxide. Now we've got moles of carbon dioxide. So we know in the denominator we're going to have moles of carbon dioxide. Now up top we're going to have molecules of carbon dioxide. And we say molecules because carbon dioxide is a molecule. It's not an atom. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Now if you look at your mole map in the upper left hand corner it says atoms within a molecule. And that's what we're looking for. We're trying to figure out how many oxygen atoms are present if we have all of these molecules of CO2. So what we'll say is one molecule of CO2 contains two atoms of O. So hopefully by now what you're seeing is that these conversions are relationships between two things. One molecule of that contains two of that. There's that many molecules of that in one mole of that. There's that many grams of that in one mole of that. So what you're doing is just making these relationships to solve for the end problem. So molecules cancels. We'll do the math, 4.56 divided by 44 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd times 2 gives us 1.24 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of oxygen in that many grams of the CO2. Okay, what you're going to want to do is practice this as much as possible. So do all the problems in the practice packet up to the pages indicated on the Moodle site. And as soon as you get the hang of this and see the connection between these conversions, it will make the rest of the math in this course much, much easier.